Hello and welcome back to the channel. Um, some of you have been watching my Mestastic adventure. Uh, we've been playing around with some of this gear and I mentioned I was going to make a little supply unit for uh, the node that I've got at my mum's house which is up in the loft and I just wanted to knock up a little supply that I could run off the lighting circuit in there to power the node because uh, it, it gets a bit tiring changing USB power banks every now and then and she didn't want a lead going up the wall into the loft so it had to be fairly discreet. So I made this up again if anyone wants to uh, download the this enclosure I can always uh, leave the STL files available for you. This is a USB a mains to USB power supply that we can connect to the existing lighting circuit where there's a switch in mum's house and just feed it off of there. It uses very little power and I've put a little indication LED on the unit there. I'll just show you how that looks on the inside. So basically on the inside we've got a standard lighting transformer that you'd find in any house kitchen type thing feeding LEDs so just a standard transformer and I've checked inside that just to make sure that I'm happy with the mains isolation between the mains and the secondary side and I am it's uh, it is certificated as you can see there and it's sold on Amazon so uh, hopefully we'll be okay uh, and I've, I've fitted this it's really cheap board I think this was five pounds this was three pounds so I fitted this little USB board which takes the 12 volts in and uh, gives you your USB output and I'll just put a little indication LED in there just for, for fun really anyway I originally did stove this out a little bit just uh, thought I might put a, a fuse on the secondary side but this has short circuit protection as does this and so I felt there was with a good solid cable there's probably no need for any extra fusing there so let's um, pop this on load now for load I, I'm using up my purple plastic here I bought one of these USB load testers quite a little nifty little device but I popped um, I just found with the little tiny knob on it it doesn't come like this so I printed off some little buttons for it and uh, an extra control knob so we can adjust the load up and see exactly how this thing fares and how hot it gets there we go there's a unit all powered up with its blue LED it almost looks purple doesn't it from that view and uh, we've got the load connected up to a little meter which will probably show you the load a bit easier these are really nifty these little things it's, I've, I'm surprised I haven't got one of these before but anyway you probably can't quite see it on the display but we've got it set for 0.6 of an amp and we just literally press the start button there it's set for 0.6 and we can see on here we're drawing 0.6 of an amp off the supply now that uh, conventionally uh, is way more than we need for our, um, our mesh-tastic unit of course so let's just um, ramp this up a little bit this fan might well kick in so if I turn it this way we should go up to one amp now we should be pulling and you can still see our voltage is maintained nicely there at 4.95 still so we'll, ra we'll ramp it up we'll already go up a bit and see what happens it's starting to drop a little bit there's 1.75 amps it's doing two there we go the fan has kicked in now and I imagine it's probably not going to do much more than that it will shut down which is what I want uh, after all obviously this thing's going to be in my mum's loft two and a half amps and we, we're dropping the voltage a little bit I imagine at three it will cut out 2.8 2.9 Three. Oh, it's going up a little bit more. That's still doing well there at three, isn't it? 4.8. There we go. It's cut out, which is what I wanted to see anyway. So that's good. That's good. Excellent stuff. Oh yes, and if anyone wants STL files to make one of these little tray adapters, I'm not sure about the buttons. I made them square. I think probably round would have been better for those. May may revisit that. There we go. So we know it's going to have more than enough oomph to run our 70 milliamps of mesh-tastic node. So we'll get that plumbed into Mum's loft and uh, we'll take it from there. Look, there's the old Slim Jim antenna that I put up when I was uh, first licensed. Was that 92, 91? It's still there, look. The old Slim Jim. That's just a two meter antenna, but it's still up there and it still works. So I obviously did something right. Right, as is everything, we're doing some electrical. Let's isolate it. He's not actually put up and down, but it's a split board here. So I'm going to assume the lights is 
that one up the upstairs lights is that one this upstairs light is still on so we'll have to check that maybe I've killed the downstairs lighting yeah it looks like I've uh, killed the downstairs lighting so electricians please mark your boards all right so push that one back up and that one down I mean that's, that's downstairs <laughs> I don't know all right so now the upstairs lighting Seems to be off, but we can't guarantee that's the same in the loft, so always get a meter and check. The advantages of being tall, no steps required. Look at that for some padding. Right, there's the, uh, the light, which is dead. There's the node, it's just up there, and we've been powering it off of a USB power bank, which isn't ideal. And the light switch cable runs all the way down here, down to the light switch there. So we're gonna take that plate off, We'll check it with our tester first, but it should be dead. We should take that plate off and then uh, see if there's any maze. Now, one little tester that I use, which is quite reasonable, are these little, these little non-contact ones. And you can, you know, you should always test these on a live source first and you should never use it as your final <laughs> test. I'll use a meter for that. But that gives you a good indication that that's dead. As we said, there's our cable coming down the joist here into the box. And you can see it there, it's focusing. There's our cable coming in there. So there's our common live at the top and there's our switch live and our neutral in that little terminal block there. So we'll check that with the meter first just to make sure it's dead before we start disconnecting things. Here we go, we're on the uh, live, the, un the uh, common live and neutral there. And we've uh, nothing on the meter there on AC volts. Right, we're in there now. We just find somewhere just to pop that. I might not put it in permanently just yet. So we'll just uh, pop it up and see how we get on. There we go. It's in there for now. Just cable tie that around there just for now. Just a bit of support for the cable. Let's go pop the power back on and see if we can get this node to spring into life. And oh, we have light. An original incandescent light bulb up there. That's probably been in there 40 odd years. There we go, some power. Because my dad never throw anything away, he's been dead 20 years. There's still some clips in there to clip the cable properly. You must have known I was gonna do this, Rog. Anyway, let's tap this cable in and get the node. Might move it, I'm not sure. Might move it across the other side of the light. It's over there. I might move it over there if I've got any spare cable ties. I'm pretty pleased how that's come out. I don't know what you think. I think it looks pretty nifty, doesn't it? Um, it's hard to get this torch in the shadow of me. Right, so that's all safely wired in. Just route this USB cable. There we go. So if you can read that, that's the card. So if you see us online, that is the uh, the node. This is getting pretty good reach from up here. As you can see, I've just got one of those uh, antennas I featured on the channel, the Lakewood 868. They're available on Amazon. Fantastic little antenna. I'm going to 3D print a little mounting bracket for this at some point just for now this was just a test because i wasn't sure how uh, how it's going to fare up here but i think it's going to be pretty good so i'm going to make a little bracket to hold that on i'm not going to fit it in the loft mount i'm just going to use this node as it is and just make a little bracket for right, it it's future pool here now um this is uh the node back home now it's in the evening and i've just run this little on these these little on these work great but it's it, it's struggling to uh it's very patchy, you can only just about get the node from my mum's. It's still getting Mick, who's about two kilometers away, but it's really patchy getting my mum, like the signal wasn't there for a couple of hours earlier. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just see what difference the Omni antenna makes to this. There's the beam set up, pointing roughly in the right direction, and we're absolutely stonking in now. So it just shows you the difference the beam actually makes. There's the... Um there's the, the one I put up in the loft there. So the one that says the card Noxy man blocks. It's just jumped out of the way there. But another one come in, bust up. That's Mick. So there we go. Um, and when we do trace route on this one, uh, trace route, it comes back real quick. There you go. There's the trace route going directly from the node. And we'll, get, we'll have a go at sending a reasonable size message that's always a good test oh, i'll leave that to propagate i don't know if you can see that my uh original see the wire there that's my original cb antenna from all those years ago 40 odd years ago 
and the ground planes hidden underneath them I'm since had all deep loft insulation put in but there it is <laughs> Right, we're back up in the loft, the back up at Mum's house. I think I'm probably going to move the node over to this side because then the the, cable, the USB cable's only got to come to this joist and then go down there. So we could run a short cable, maybe keep it a bit tidier. Hello, Mum. It's me again, testing this link. Yeah, you can see it on the display, can't you? There we go. That's perfect. I could have got it a little bit higher. But there's a, a roof truss, a metal truss up there. I just wanted to keep the antenna well away from the metal truss. So there we go. Uh, we're back in business. And a uh, nice, neat little installation. As I've said, I'll leave some links in the places you can get these. If you've already built one of these and you want to make one of these, there you go. You've got a little bracket for it. And uh, I love doing stuff like that. I know you could lash these things up. I could use the loft attachment, but I just like designing and making stuff. It's all part of the hobby. It's uh, a fun part of the hobby I really enjoy. Okay, so if you have been, I can thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already done so, please click the subscribe button. It really helps me when you do that. And uh, we'll catch you on uh, the next video, whatever that may be. We'll uh, have a good week and we'll see you soon.